this life, gotta make your own deals, chase your own thrills, pay your own bills, on the outer loop, sitting on chrome wheels, phone synced up to the newest chrome bills, on air, who cares if it's right or wrong, I just care which guests they invited on, without a minute to stall, and there was liquor involved with some hype songs, and the night is young, right on cue, the talking begins, and we check out what Steve Bills got on the blends, a bit grimy, a backdrop from the late 80s to the mid 90s Till it finally takes us to a rhythm that works And K. Chrome spits a verse that he didn't rehearse Both flex skills proving it's all in So gather around for the newest installment Chrome Bills Episode number 81 Episode 81 of Chrome Bills And let's kick it right off by announcing a very, very special guest today DC Zone, Mellow Music Zone, Odyssey. What's up, man? What's Welcome. Up, How y'all doing, man? What's up? Thank you for joining us. Definitely. Man, thanks thank for, thanks for, for joining us. Me, thank y'all for having me. I'm, I'm, a little uh, ner- I'm a little nervous, to be honest, man. Steve's hype, man. <laughs> I'm a big fan. Yeah, man. Yeah, stop playing. Yeah. I'm, gonna fa- I'm, I'm fanning out a little bit. So it's funny, because when we said we were going to have you on, originally it was going to be down here in Maryland. Steve was like, yo, I told Andy to come through. I told so-and-so to come through. It was going to be like a house party. Yo, I cleaned my house, you know? <laughs> you know saying? I cleaned off the floorboards and all that. I apologize. Absolutely. It was man, worth actually, it, though. I, I needed to never clean. made it down, man. Hey, that's all right, man. Next, next time. So yeah. I got to ask. So I know uh, one of the big things that has happened recently for you you got married congratulations on that we want to know you. so you were you were traveling a bit and shooting videos was that for the new record that's coming out on may 5th uh yeah 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 i actually um i shot a video recently went to south by came back shot another one and um i'm about to head out on tour in two days and i'm gonna shoot two while i'm on road too wow damn nice yeah you're a busy dude how many how many dates you got on this tour coming up? I don't even know. I think it's somewhere around like 2022, 20, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, but all, most of the video stuff is going to be in L.A. L.A. is going to be crazy. I get into L.A. on like, I was talking to uh, my manager today. I get into L.A. on May 1st. I drive down from, from San Francisco from doing a gig the night before. I'm doing balcony television. I'm doing a private performance for some... Um, marketing company like their like their party <laughs> nice Illu- Illuminati <laughs> <That's it. laughs> and, and then I gotta do I'm doing a, a couple podcast interviews I do a show the next day and then I shoot a video in Malibu until 3 in the morning and then wow. we fly back to New York the next day so that one's now, gonna be crazy I gotta ask so you have it scheduled cause that's obviously a lot of stuff you have it scheduled to the point that you know you're shooting a video till 3am and then you gotta bounce yes like I know that's exactly crazy where scheduling. I'm gonna be at every day until December <laughs> oh wow <laughs> You can wow. you can listen to uh, Killing Time and, and realize that my <laughs> man's got a tight schedule. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Do you yeah, do you prefer to be that way or, or do you like a slower pace or both? I prefer to be in the house with nothing to do. Okay. Like seriously, like I I don't like touring. I don't like performing. I don't like doing anything but staying in the house. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, how does this how does this impact like your creative process cuz Obviously, you have a little bit less time for beat making and writing rhymes, but you know, as being a fan of your music, I've also heard the joint where like wrote this joint in Moscow or like yeah. or, right. So, do do you think if you're a straight book between now and December that you will get less done than if you were just sitting at home or more or eat dead even? It's tough to say. Um, uh, this particular run that I'm doing right now before the record comes out. I'm I'm going into some new territory that I haven't been. I don't really tour the interior of the country too much. Okay. Whenever I go to new cities, I don't. I'm not as creative. I don't stay in the hotel as much and work. Okay. I actually want to see what's going on outside and, you know, visit the place. But when I'm in a repeat city, as a, as often is the case, I work a lot more and I don't leave the hotel. And in the in the tour van, on the train, on the plane, I, I make beats on my laptop. So, that's all I use. So I just I'm just you know making music on my laptop and writing. I don't like record that much when I'm on the road. I wait to record when I get home or someplace stationary where I can get to a mic. And okay, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. It'd be like, damn, you're in a, in a hotel recording. They're like, this guy next door. You know what, the only reason <laughs> I don't record on the road is I'm actually getting it developed now is uh, mic stands are too heavy to travel with. Everything else, I, I got it down into a backpack. Oh. Like a interface, the wires, the headphones, the mic, et cetera. I can fit it all in one backpack. 
But that, I came up with this idea of a tripod because they made it like aluminum and lightweight. And then taking the head off of it and putting on a microphone head and welding that on instead. That way you can try, you know how you can fold up the uh, yep. tripods really, yep. really small? I'm getting it sent back now. Once I get that done, I'll start recording on the road. Oh, that's pretty dope, actually. I mean, you could really change the game with something like that. Like, if you got that, <laughs> I was if just you got thinking a patent that on side that, hustle. Yeah, everybody'd be using that. <laughs> I mean, that. don't you need, like, like don't you need the padding on the walls for, nah. to get hey, your focus? Nah, he's got to figure it out, man. I don't have any of the padding on the walls. Even when I record at home, I need no, I don't use any of that. You do all that in post. So, oh, yeah. that's like post-production? You just, you put effects on it? Yeah, well, you or do normally the comp- you use a condenser mic, so it's only picking up what's being recorded in the front of it, and it's, it uh. cuts off after a certain radius, like out past it. Okay. So it's, I've never I've never had a booth. I've never recorded with anything behind my mic. Did you? Uh, I'm trying to call back. We actually had EXO as an interview on a, la- a prior Chrome Bills episode. Did 65? you guys record the Diamond District you? album at your house? Yeah. yeah. That is fucking what's yeah. up. That is sick. Yeah. And recorded. that's including the vocals and everything, yeah, right? Yeah, and it's yeah. probably just an open it's living room. It's done in a crib. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. We shout out, lo- big, big shout out to Diamond District real quick, man. Oh, oh hell yeah. Appreciate you. Actually, well, I, I want to go in. That was one of my questions is I want to say Cole and I, obviously, for for listeners of the show that don't know, I mean, we've known each other for probably going on 15 oh, yeah, years. Long like long time, man. Yeah. And I, I know you know a lot of rappers in the D.C. area that other than Cole and myself, you probably sure. knew everyone that was doing, that was making moves. At some point in time. Right, exactly. <laughs> how did you, how did it end up the three of you guys? And understanding, I think it's an amazing fit. I just, I'm curious, like, sure. the, how that organically came together. Um, that's an interesting word. I would say it wasn't organic. Oh, really? Okay. Well, we all frequented the same uh, open mic at um, uh, Capital uh, City Records. Okay. You remember that? The, the up, was that the upstairs? Yeah, upstairs yeah. About a flower shop. You and Eleven? Yeah. Okay. We would always go there and we were always like fans of each other's work. And I would I, I noticed their stage presence, their delivery, their rounds. It's like, all right, they're really, really dope. They're good. And of course, I was affiliated with so many other artists. So why them? I guess uh, the, the answer is more of a business aspect. Diamond District is, for all intents and purposes, a boy band. Where you have <laughs> characters. What do you say, boy band? A boy yeah. band. A boy yeah. Band. yeah. You have you have characters that the listener finds themselves in and attaches themselves to. And I've always looked at pop models and mainstream models and found a way to how can I adopt this to the way I make music? How can I keep the integrity but have the sensibility of, of a mainstream um, label or an artist? So I was looking at the industry at the time and electronic sounds had really started to really take over in indie rap music and in mainstream, a lot of trends, et cetera, from glitch hop to electronic to wonky beat, whatever you want to call it, dubstep, post-dubstep, grime, et cetera, all those things starting to influence rap. So rap became really synthesized and ambient, and I'm a huge fan of that as well, but it left an opportunity for a really raw, organic record to get noticed and paid attention to because everything else sounded so different. So when I saw that, I said, all right, that void needs to be filled. I want to do a retro 90s record. And I want to reflect DC because we never had that record on a on a nationwide scale to reflect our slang, our streets, our cities, our neighborhoods. Like I knew so much about New York and and the Fifth Ward of Houston and LA, but I never been to those places because of rap records. DC never had that. Wow. So I said, how are we going to tell that story? We need someone who comes from the suburbs. Okay, let's put that in the educated class. We need someone that floated around the whole DMV from section eight to whatever the case may be. Let's call that working class. And we need somebody born and bred in the city from the streets. Let's call that the streets. The streets was XO, the working class was YU, the educated was me. Not to say that we're not all a bit of all of those things, yep. but for all intents and purposes, those were the lanes that I wanted to cover to get the full spectrum of what it's like to be from Washington, D.C. And that's why I selected them to be in the group. I, this is, I mean, that's amazing. I, how did how did you present it to them? The exact same way I told you. That's amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. Like, I watch hey, Mad Men, and I'm like, yo, this dude just pitched the shit out of that. That's a yeah. great idea. Uh, Odyssey's the RZA. Right. You know? <laughs> right. I told him straight up, why? Why them? I told him straight up. Like, I'm very transparent with things. Yeah. And you produced the whole... There's two Diamond District albums. You produced all of, every beat on both albums? No. Um two tracks on the first album I didn't produce. One was by Dunk, a DTMD. Uh, Dunk's dope producer from Chevrolet, Maryland, also from Prince George's County. Uh, and Slim Cat 78 
from the 1978 okay. is in a group of YU. Yep. And Yo. tons of other groups throughout time in the DC music scene. Uh, he produced one track as well. The next album, I did all the tracks. Okay. Yeah, yeah we've been going crazy for that 1978ers album. Exactly. Oh, well, in the Diamond District, I think when we did... Oh, and a Diamond District album. We did a, a Best Albums of 2014 episode when we did like a clip show and went through a bunch of the interviews we had done in 2014. And I want to say, did all of us have it as number one? Yeah. Oh. I think Cole mistakenly, actually, we bust his balls about this. <laughs> Cole mistakenly called it the best album ever when he was interviewing EXO. <laughs> like, he meant I to mean, say, like, it's the greatest album of uh, 2014, and he just, yeah, like, left out the year Yeah, it was one of those moments, so I was like, yo, I've, I've been listening, this is all I've been listening to for oh, two man. straight days, and now I'm talking to the guy, like, I'm excited. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, so let me yeah. ask you, I gotta ask you about this, like, so what you said in terms of you get a view of the mainstream and how they'll give you things that you can work with. Sure. There's a line that you have uh, in industry that's afraid of some real talent. What was the reception to Diamond District like at that level of things? Was it what you thought it would be? Or are you not even going for that? Oh, man, I wasn't even going for that. We got hit up by Q-Tip to manage us, Rich Kleiman from Rock Nation. Who are you? Um, Who are you? Tons of people were hitting us up to work with us. Tons of labels and A&Rs, et cetera. And... Oftentimes, what they were pitching just wasn't what I was interested in. And is this after I, the first record, or is this, this the one that the just first dropped? Record. Oh, really? Okay. The first record. Wow. This was yeah. Up. Um, things fizzled out after the first record, and we 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 had to rebuild things after, which is, what took a long time for it to come out. We were just solo artists first. We went back to being that, and after the first record, uh, there was a lot of attention on us from people that I looked up to in the industry and people who I had no idea were paying attention. You know, um, but. It never really panned out because it was never really for us. I won't say any names, but we sat in an office meeting once where someone wanted to sign us under the conditions of us becoming an East Coast art future, asking us did we would we contemplate adding Fat Trail to our group and a couple more MCs from the Mid Atlantic and becoming an East Coast version of Art Future. Wow. It's like, no, that's that's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that happened. Like it was just weird. Right. You never microwaved people, a cat or something, man? <laughs> <laughs> what's interesting, because I think a lot of the times with those, what's whack about those situations is they're like, yo, like if you still let us have this machine, but only after we grew to the point organically where like, you know, we were going on the same street, like we'd be great, but you're trying to force this shit. Right. You know oh, what man. I mean? A hundred percent. Like, why does that always happen where they like you for what you are, they sign you for what you are, they turn you into something else and then, then disappointed when the something else doesn't work. I, I keep telling the people that hit us up <laughs> and I'd so imagine they're the same. I keep that telling so the people that on. hit us up and I'd imagine that the same people right. that hit up Odyssey. When they hit us up about making uh, Chrome Bills into more like a Charlie Rose type show, I'm like, no, we can't have that. So I know I know exactly where you're coming from. Yeah, if you yeah. like it enough to call me, what what's the problem? Right. right. <laughs> How about like Charlie Rose and Amber Rose get together? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just kind of cover all the bases. <laughs> I think all the roses. I heard a, I heard Jay Zone say something very similar on a on an interview recently. You okay. Know, you, this is why you signed me. Now you change me into something else, and then you drop me on, because I don't sound already. like what I sound like. Right. You know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I've I've stayed clear away from that, and it's to the point now where I still get tons of offers, and now it's a game of ignorance where people hit me up to sign me, not knowing that, you know, I already have a situation, and that the money that I make from this situation you can't even offer me with your major label or your publishing deal that I'm already sorted, and then they're just like, oh wow, and they have to play catch up and right. realize that what they're offering me is actually um, a step back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just because it's a major label, like I actually am not. I'm past that at this point, you know. Like all so, things being equal, you're saying to a, a place of employment, like I'm, I can do better. Yeah, I mean, it's what it kind of comes down to. That's ill, man. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely at that point. You know? So it segues into one of the things I definitely wanted to make sure we talk about, which is that, you know, between you, Diamond District, and I've loved everything that Open Mike Eagles putting out right now. Yeah. How definitely. did, how did Mellow Music? 
I'm supposed to be in this video tonight at 7 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> it goes on till 10 now. So I'm there you go. Well, let, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> where's that? It's in New York? It's in Williamsburg. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's is, it open mic e- is it Open yeah. Mike Eagle video? Yeah, he's shooting <laughs> Chuck, it today. Chuck, between... Can Chuck go with you? He wants to go. If you can't, it's from yeah. 6 to 10. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Chuck's uh, we, we, Yeah, we'll work that out. We're going to do it there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right, all right, cool. Shout outs to Open Mike Eagle. Yo, my bad. Yo, I don't. This is as proud of like Chrome Bills being an established thing is that yeah. he remembered he had the interview with us but forgot about the Over Mike Eagle video shoot. That's because like I, that. I, for, I forgot the first one with y'all. See? Oh, that, <laughs> still, I'm still feeling good about that. That's crazy. But did, the, so it's funny because I watched on the on the flight back uh, to New York last night, I watched the Stone Sir documentary and I was realizing like, okay, a lot of shit goes on behind the scene and sometimes it's it's a signing of one or two acts that really define a label. Mm. Who were you the first act that Mellow Music put out? Because the first Diamond District album is not on the label, right? The, in the no, I was. Oh, it is. Okay, so is that the first record? Uh, no, the first record would be um, a compilation, and that compilation was called. Oh my God! Mm. Shout outs to Mike Toll. Mellow Madness. What was it? Was it? Um, and uh, he's gonna kill me if he rehears this and forget. <laughs> uh, it was a compilation that we worked on. That was the first release. But you were involved uh, in the first release, I guess. Yes, yes, okay. absolutely, absolutely. That's how it kind of things came into fruition. Like, uh, at the time, Mike was um, getting it's called tracks Ma- Mandela. from producers. Uh, no, 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 it wasn't Mandela. No, 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 no. It All was, right, my bad, it was, see? I'm fucking if, up. If you go to the Mellow Music, um, oh, look at this. What's that say? <laughs> Mike Eagle, what's cracking with you? Shooting this video in Bushwick. <laughs> <laughs> the text just came oh, God. Oh, no. All right. All right. We're going to deal with that in a second after these messages. Um, no, the first compilation was called, um, it's got like a Gandhi type dude meditating mm-hmm. on the cover with like a heart in the middle and like he's breaking chains. Mental, Mental liberation. liberation. Mental liberation. Mental liberation. Mental liberation was the first release. Okay. And, and that was. Who's behind the scenes? Is that a DC guy that started the label? No, he's actually from uh, Tucson, Arizona, and he still lives there. That's where he's based. Oh, really? That's okay. Random. Yeah. I, what? Hey. He he was he was buying verses from artists that he he liked and buying beats from producers that he liked, and I was one of those producers. And yet, I was the only one out of all the people who he was buying beats from to say, "What are you doing with these?" And he said, <laughs> well, I have this idea of creating this compilation between people and making them collaborate who oftentimes don't collaborate, and I want to see them work with each other. I said, well, what are you doing with it after it's done? He says, I haven't really thought about it yet. And that's when I came along and, and introduced distribution and um, basically making the record cohesive. And that's how things got started. He had already had the label. He had the idea, the concept, and I brought him to Fat Beats, and that's how that started. And then since then, we've pioneered so many ideas. There's no artist technically signed to Mellow Music Group. There's really? Only, there's only records signed. Huh. You sign for this amount of records, and once that's done, you can, you're can you free to do whatever you want. You're also free to do whatever you want while you're on this contract as long as we get these records. Okay. So it, it allows the artist to make money for themselves and be free and be independent and not be pigeonholed to just held to this one pro, this one contract. So you can work on this. We have a two-album contract with Mellow Music, and we want these two records by this time. You turn them in by this time and you're working on four other projects at the same time, it's fine. Do you? You okay. know, ours are gonna get ours are gonna be better. They'll have better press. <laughs> but <laughs> <It's true. laughs> but do you, you know? And um that that happened, uh Diamond District, the first record, we released it for free and then put it out for sale. And people were like, Is that that's madness? You had it out for free for almost a year, you're gonna release it? And I said to Mike, you know, people buy because they want to not because they have to. People buy because they collect records, because they want a tangible product. And the people who don't buy, it's not gonna stop them. It's true. So let them bootleg it and download it first, you know, and actually centralize your fan base by making them download it from one central place versus it being ripped on, on a whole bunch of different uh, platforms. Centralize it and make sure that one download is coming from you so you can at least monitor those downloads then cater to the people who buy because they're going to buy anyway. But if you do it the other way around, you'll lose out. Yeah, and so you guys you, did do that because I, I remember you posting something, this is years ago, about the download mark hitting a certain milestone and I was just like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah. And then we catered to the people who wanted to buy records. And then now it's, it's, it's uh, 
it's like a staple in marketing where you release several free tracks or free mixtape or free EP, then you come out with a record where that was like one of the building stones for us. It's one of the cornerstones, you know. That's awesome. Yeah. I thought you said you don't monitor the cl- the hits and the clicks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? Back then I did, and now I don't. Straight up, <laughs> like I don't know how many records I've sold to this day. Huh. Mike just tells me you're doing good or you could do better. <laughs> that's, <laughs> it. that's it. Like I actually don't know the numbers anymore. Is Mike driving a nice car right now? And he's like, yeah, Mike, yeah we're not really moving <laughs> units right now. <laughs> Mike, Mike's driving a nice car. He is. And he's on his this way to Tesla's, Hawaii tomorrow. This Tesla's working out nice though. <laughs> <laughs> he's driving a nice car. I think he had a nice car even before the label though. So shout outs to Mike. He been getting it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> What's up? So you recently you recently got married. It's funny. So when we started talking about doing the uh, the interview, it was probably like three weeks ago. And I checked Instagram one day, and I saw that you got married. I was like, I'm, I might not hear from this dude for a minute. Man. <laughs> <laughs> this dude's honeymoon. Congratulations, man. Thank yeah, you, man. Much appreciated, man. I know we talked about it uh, before we started recording. You gave such a great answer. Like, how has that impacted things for you? Uh, as I was mentioning before, it hasn't really changed anything. Honestly, like I, I'm not scared, or, or, and I don't know what's supposed to come like stereotypically from after you get married. But those things haven't really happened yet. Um, but one thing is uh, waking up and, and seeing a ring on my hand left me with this uh, wonderful urge of responsibility and acceptance, and this voluntary obligation to another human being, and it's this constant reminder of it. And I'm, I'm forever grateful for it and appreciative. I feel like my life has such a, a more important purpose that I'm no longer, I knew I wasn't living for myself, but this is a real reminder that I no longer live for myself. That's really dope. That's great, man. Definitely. That's like the perfect, you should write that and sell it to Hallmark. That's like the perfect <laughs> answer. This is kind of a long one for the card though, you know? Right, yeah. you know, for the smaller print. I could, I could come up with a consolidated version for one. <laughs> right. Song. Well, shit, nah. I mean, as many records you put out, you could just put out like eight cards. <laughs> Shoot, man. Yeah, it's it's cool though. Like I'm 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 super excited. She's actually gonna come on tour with me uh, in two days. Wow, and that's dope. We're gonna we're gonna go all across the country and Canada together, and she's gonna get to see a lot of the country. She's she's Moroccan, but born and raised in France, so she hasn't really seen a lot of the states. So she's gonna see a lot of the states for the first time, which I I always love seeing places through people's eyes. You know. Yeah. Do you play uh, when you make something new? Do you play it for her? Is she is her input important? into um, you what you release what? I don't I, I let her listen to stuff while I'm making it but once it's done I have a strict rule like don't play my music in front of me like I hate hearing my own music right so, really yeah she plays it when I'm not around and um, yeah she's a tough critic man like I don't know if you, <laughs> how much you know about Parisians but they're like hip hop heads like they like that real shit so if I got anything that's like slightly pretty like she's like eh <laughs> 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 You're like, check out this joint I did called That's Love. She's like, I, I already am kind of thinking it might be soft. <laughs> yeah, so that album drops on uh, May 5th. Where is it going to be available? Um, everywhere. On okay. all, all uh, okay. digital platforms. I don't know who we went with. I think we're going with um, Target or Best Buy on this one, and I don't wow. know which one it's going to be. Okay. But hey yo. One of them. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know. But you guys are doing vinyl it. too? Of course. Okay. Of course. Yeah. You've done vinyl of every release? Yeah. All Even all the beat stuff? Yeah. Really? Yeah, okay. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I know I have Rock Creek Park vinyl for sure. Oh, much appreciate. Yeah, it yeah. definitely be vinyl. <laughs> uh, it'll be vinyl, CD, uh, digital, all that stuff. Yeah. Dope as hell. Uh, singles too? Or just full length? Uh, I don't know if any singles will make it on vinyl. I'm not sure. Okay. Is there a demand for that? Like, would people buy that? I'd, I'd rather have a single. I'd rather, have, I'd rather have a single on vinyl, to be honest. Yeah. Because I like the, I like the instrumentals. Okay. You know? All right. Well, then I, I need to think about. It. Somebody asked me to put out some seven inches from the record too. Somebody seven said, "Oh, you gotta put that love on a seven inch." <laughs> like, okay. All right. Right. I think. Right. Did you I actually do, put? Did you do twelve inch singles for Tangible Dream, or just no, full length? I don't think we've ever. Done or was it. there not vinyl for that? We d- it's definitely okay. not Tangible Dream. I don't think we've done singles for any of my stuff. Maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think we were doing too much. Steve, why am I thinking you have a trying to do it all? No, that was never mind. We're just playing it off the 12 okay. inch. That's right. We're just playing it off of this. Well, so check this. I actually had a seven inch single that I put out, 
uh, from a record I did last September. But what I did was I gave the down. Yeah, for the like hundred thousand more people we're gonna get on this listening to this you episode, never I want them to know before. that. Shameless plug. Yo, Yo well, it's, so it's your boy Shameless <laughs> over here. Well, I just put the instrumentals out as a as a download code, like all of them. Got you. I feel like Got the seven you. inch is cool. Like here's the song. You really want these? I'll fucking I'll email them to you. Right. Send okay. me up. Okay. You know. Okay. All right. Yeah. Hey, then maybe it's something I need to consider. Let me talk to Mike, man. Here's one thing I want to ask you. I thought it was interesting you were talking about earlier that you don't like to perform. And so, as Chuck alluded to earlier, there was a pretty heavy rap scene like in the late 90s, 2000s down in D.C. And there was a lot of different people. And I remember seeing you, it might have been like a beat battle, like freestyling. And I I was like, holy shit, like this dude, this dude's dope. Probably three or four is... Three or four years later, I saw you at Chief Ike's. Like, you'd been traveling the world. Like, you went through, like, a boot camp. Because <laughs> what I saw at Chief Ike's was, like, the most refined. You had the crowd by the throat. Everybody was having a good time. Yeah. You were on point. Why don't you like performing? Because, I, I mean, from, from what I'd imagine you are now, you're just, like, on some Hulk shit. Just, like, a whole nother level. It, you know, it's funny, man. I this will probably come across egotistical, but it's the furthest thing from it. Like, I'm a really good performer. I'm a very, very good performer. And the reason why I think I'm a very good performer is because I'm removed from it. And I don't necessarily get this enjoyment from from being on stage. I used to back in those days, but I'm a cynical person. I'm a jaded individual and I'm hyper aware of things. And that hyper awareness has been very, very good for me to be observational to figure out what works musically to make a a success out of it. But the Mm -hmm. adverse side of that is things lose their uniqueness very quickly with me. So from touring constantly, like six months of the year, 180 shows, things started to become the same. Every city had the one drunk person who I tell them, don't put your beer on the merch table. They put their beer on the merch table. They spill it everywhere. They say sorry. They buy three records instead of one to make up for it. But you knew they were going to. Every city has the heckler. Every city has X amount of people who just showed up to be there and X amount of people who are there because they want to see you. Every city has the people who want you to perform songs like you're a jukebox and you're not. You have a set. (laughs) So when things started to become just the same over and over every night, I started to realize that the best way to have a show is to very much understand that this is theater and I'm acting on stage. Our jokes are rehearsed. The parts where you think I mess up are not mistakes. They're, they're, they're intentional. And that made me have a better show and I just became on autopilot. And the show got better and better and better because I wasn't in my feelings on stage. I was actually doing a play. And I do my shows like I'm doing a play. I sequence the music completely different than it is on the album to have more drama at certain parts. There's acapellas where it's not really acapellas. I just take the drums out to add this emotion and the emotion is added in my voice to emphasize on a specific part. And I'm performing this song, these, these, these songs on stage. I'm not just rapping on stage. And I don't necessarily, it's I'm not having a blast. It's like a reel that's just like, all right, hit play on the show. And I do the show and I'm done. <laughs> And I'm not a night owl. Like, I hate being out late. I'm usually to bed by 11 o'clock. So when I finish the shows, I don't even sell my own merch anymore. I run right off the stage. I go back to the hotel. I take a shower. I go to sleep. The rest of my band is out, like, selling my merch, partying all night. You know? <laughs> like, it's, and, and I've, I've very much, over the years, I've, the show has gotten better, and I've become more recluse as, as a result of it, where I am just do the show and I go home. You know what I mean? I want to focus on one thing because I've seen you perform with the DJ. I think it was Unknown. Yeah. Shout oh. out. And uh, I've seen you play with the band. Who are you? Are you <laughs> playing with Are you playing with the band or are you going with the DJ this time? Or? This run is with a DJ. Okay. Is it Is it Richard? Yeah, of course. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Of course. He'll be here tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I gotta, I'll shoot him a text. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll be up here tomorrow. Oh. And um, that is my favorite part. In the van with, with Rich or the rest of the band, dinner, rehearsal, sound check. I'm having a blast. Like, I love it. The sightseeing, I love it. Talking with people out in the streets during the day, I love it. That's the things that inspire me to keep wanting to make music. Actually being on stage, 
I want that shit over with as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think I've ever heard an artist say that. To be honest. Yeah. I think because most of, most of the time artists are like egomaniacs. Right. Oh, they're very the egomaniacs. That, that's the part that that's the part that they love. Yeah, they perform you know? for themselves. I don't perform for so myself. Like, I perform for the crowd. Fair enough. I give them the best show, and I want to go home and re- and regenerate, <laughs> and then do it again the next day because I'm going to do that thirty times straight. You know. Has your voice ever given out? You know what? Very very rarely. Okay. No talking before. And I'm I'm right back in the hotel afterwards, and I'm drinking tea and honey right before I walk on stage, and I make sure that I don't have to yell into the mic. Yeah, because like it's a business, man. If I lose my voice, like how much am I gonna lose out on? I can't afford right. to lose my voice, man. Like I'm about, my my manager just hit me today, asked the band, are you guys available from August 27th to October 7th? Yo. To tour wow. Europe, <laughs> and it's gonna be damn near a show a day. Like Damn. what? Mike, Mike's got <laughs> car payments, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. right. Do you think the shows are better received with the guy. band in Europe? I notice there's more of a. Or do, do you do you feel? I guess which one do you like doing better? Because I, I imagine from an economic standpoint, it's easier to bring one dude and not five. Economics are the reasons why I don't tour with the band that much in the states. Okay. Which that's probably going to change within the next year because we actually have larger agencies reaching out to me to represent me for booking in the States, which I've never had. Okay. So I come from an era where we were on the cusp of that raucous era, and then Crunk came in, and we almost had to just wait it out. There was no Wale's, J. Cole's, Kendrick Lamar's, Lupe Fiasco's, these underground, mainstream, approved, accepted rappers. Didn't exist. It's true. So if you wanted to survive... We, we packed up bags and went to Europe to do shows because the Euro was so strong back then. Like, I could do 700 Euros for a show, which for them was like $700, but I was making a grand at 1200 And I was staying out there killing it. So as a result of that era happening in the States where it was dried up for that style of music, that forced me to tour more in, in Europe. But it wasn't because I was received better. I've always sold more records in the States, surely because there's more people here. My largest selling demographic is California. Next is New York. After that is D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. And if the stats counted them as one unit, it would be the nar- largest selling uh, market for me. But they consider all of those three separate areas. Oh, okay. And which b- blows people out. They're like, oh, you're probably really big in Europe. And I'm like, I just toured there because it's 45 minutes from Brussels to Antwerp, and one speaks Flemish and one speaks French, and they don't drive 45 minutes to do shows. <laughs> so how much gas money am I spending and how much money am I making? That's why I'm out there touring more, not because right. I get more love and way more festivals. So they can pay me 10 grand and up to book my band. The States isn't doing that. It's six of us on that stage with drums and equipment. That's three hotel rooms. That's a sprinter van to fit everything in and all of us. Most of these promoters right now outside of the coast can't afford us. So I don't tour with the band in the States. You know what I mean? I feel like we should at least have a gift bag to give him for coming on. Like, we, we, we can't afford that. <laughs> I, don't have much, I don't have much for him. Chuck, what do you got? Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna go even worse. I'm going to be like, hey, do you mind signing this record? Hey, before you take it's, all good. <laughs> it's just, it's so much more business than people understand, you know? Oh, yeah. You know, it's, I believe it. it. Yeah. And now you've obviously got people handling, well, I'm just going to assume you've got people handling some of the legwork, so to speak, of doing that. Have you been kind of riding with the same people and is it all it's, homegrown or are you just... Man, it's been the same. Like, uh, everything in my career at this point has come from me reaching out to people, them not wanting to work with me, and then me having to learn to do it for myself. Pretty much everything. Almost down till today. Today I tried to go have a meeting with an accountant who told me I didn't make enough money for him to take me on. (laughs) (laughs) And he, I, 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 I make, he was looking for 300,000 and up. Wow. He's like, okay. I don't have 300,000. I'm in the hundreds, but I don't have 300,000. But I'm like, I fucking gotta do all of this shit myself. <laughs> like, <laughs> now I gotta go learn. I don't know anything about Excel. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. None of this. Like, I, I, I don't know anything about it. So now I gotta learn how to do all of this stuff for myself. And touring started the exact same way. Well, how did that, where does that come from in you? I mean, like, I, so you grew up in the PG County area? And so can you tell us a little bit about where you came from and like where, because that, that's a very important character to have, to be oh, able to man. do, to, like a self-starter, to learn how to do things yourself. Right. 
I don't know. I mean, I was the only child until I was nine. I think that probably has a lot to do with it. Okay. You know, I was just by myself a lot. Uh, my parents are divorced. My father took me and raised me. He worked a lot. So I was just alone a lot, left to my own imagination. I think that probably had a large part to do in it. In high school, when I started the rhyme, I wanted to be in this group that was getting a lot of hype from everybody else in school. They said, nah. Now nah, we don't mess with you. And you were rapping before you were making beats? Yeah. Okay. So um, Did they give you a reason? Um, they was they was just I and now when I look back on it, I think they was just probably threatened because I was dope. Yeah, that was that's it. What I'm like, there's no way they <laughs> that were like, was it. Whack. I was always that kid. I was t- I was tall on the basketball court, so nobody would let me play because I was taller than everybody else. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was like one of those things. You know what I mean? Right. So I played basketball by myself. You know what I mean? Um, until it was cool to be tall. You know what I mean? <laughs> so right. Then right. like, you can be on our team. But at that certain age, everybody looked up and was like, nah, you can't play with us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I bet your post those- moves are ridiculous. Like you and <laughs> It was one of those situations. Uh, when I first started rhyming, this group I wanted to be in wouldn't accept me, so I started rapping by myself. Sean Bourne, who's older than me, brought me to his crib to make to uh, rap, to produce me. I, he asked me to make beats, and he taught me how to make beats because I wanted to make beats faster than I was receiving them. So I started learning how to make beats. Then uh, I didn't have a place to record, and everybody wanted to charge me money that I didn't have, so I started learning how to record. Then I wanted to go on tour once I started to release records. And one of the biggest agencies in Europe who was doing a lot of underground uh, events told me, no, no one knows you out here, even though I had fans. So I used my pay- my space to contact fans. I asked them where they went to see shows. I asked them to go there and get me the promoter's contacts. They went and did that. And I emailed the promoter saying, I've got fans in your city. You should book me. So I started doing singles with producers in different cities in England and um, Ireland and Berlin and Sweden started working with people so that I could have a buzz. Then I went and did album release parties with them. I bought a URL pass ticket for six weeks of unlimited travel. I stayed in Europe doing shows, waiting for there to be hip hop nights so that no matter if it was me or anyone, they was gonna show up anyway because it was already a night where people came to hear hip hop records. Okay. Stayed out for six weeks and every promoter that booked me on that tour still books me to this day. Wow. Every single one of them. That was 2006. Wow. You know? Yeah, it was it was crazy, man. And That's they amazing. still they still book me. They're very they're, they're very close friends. They stay at my house when they come visit now, you know. Who's the guy from Europe that's on what is it? American Grind? Isn't there American, or American Grind. Greed, American Greed? Isn't there uh Oh, oh, um the the rapper who's on uh Yeah, you cuz you have one feature on the first record, on, right? On the first record. Um What are y'all talking about? It's uh it's Tranquil. It's okay. always tranquil. Oh. It's my man from London. Okay. He was on that first tour. I never had a show in London. He hit me up on MySpace and said, I see you don't have a show in London, but you should still come here and you can stay at my house and I'll show you around. And that's wow. how I met everybody in London and that's how I started getting shows in London. So I still know him to this day as well. Okay. You know I mean? Nice. Yeah. My bad. American Greed on your album, not the TV show American Greed. Like, <laughs> thinking this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, so to that point, have you have you looked into doing any kind of like placement or having something as a theme song or get it licensed basically um, to a movie or TV show? Bro. Yo, I saw a commercial with uh, Nadonic and Sue on it where they used Ready to Rock, right? Duh, Didn't they use the instrumental? That's how I'm eating right now, man, licensing. Oh, oh really? Word. Okay. Yeah, He's already I, on I it. I can't really name the names on it now, but I have something on a very big HBO series that's about to launch. Oh, wow. Um, true, is it true, something that's already been out or something that's, something that's unique to them? It's something that's been out. Like we'll know if we're nerds yeah, yeah, you'll and fans, know we'll know it right oh, yeah, away. You'll know. You're like, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, if it's did, True Detective, uh, I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I might yeah. actually lose my mind. Um, if did, True Detective uh, starts with skipping rocks. I'm just like, um, my head's gonna explode. <laughs> a Lifetime movie that's actually gonna air. The movie's gonna be in a couple theaters around the country as well, with like Macy Gray and a couple other people. I did a, a song for that. I did. Um, Three Nike commercials in the past two years: Audi, Ray Ban, Hennessy, Black and Mild. Like, who sprint. are you? Who are like, you? Who are you? Like, who are you? <laughs> like all kinds of stuff that people don't even know that there's money in it. You can do like you know, 15 second clips of of advertisements on Instagram. You can get paid for those to do the music for those. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And nice. People pay for much. And for now, is, are you? <laughs> 
and maybe this might even be a question you don't want to answer, but are you purposely not using samples for beats on some of those? Or are you still, are you clearing stuff or? Like, um, uh, I replay everything if there is a sample. You replace, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I was curious, it. when you said the laptop thing, I was like, I, first beat you ever made, right? If you're, you at Sean Bourne's house, you guys are it was sampling an records. X. Yeah, and sampling samples, records. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But even back then, I was playing stuff over top of it. Now I have my band play over top of my work. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, yeah they play on everything. You s- yeah, yeah that on um, people hear what they say. You you went to um, Berkeley School of Music to get the brass on there. The brass and the strings were done in Berkeley for free by college students. That's so fire! Wow. Yeah. So on a, what on came a, f- on a condenser mic in a basement? Oh wow! <laughs> Not even the padded walls, man. No, right. no padded what, walls. What, what what came first? What came first? The your music or the you, you got the brass and then brought that back. No, my music first, and then um, I, I I basically charted out on a on a board each okay. song going down this way, and then the instruments going this way, and after I make the music, I put a check mark next to what each track needs. So I say these tracks need brass, these tracks need strings, these tracks need both. Crazy. And then and then I go through, and then within hours I will get the whole record done. You know. Do you have a pretty rigid routine when you're at home in terms of, because like your time management skills, one of the things I wanted to ask is like you're, one of the themes in your music is relativity and you, you discuss time a lot. You must be very good at budgeting your time. And like it, you, you, you might've said this off air that you were shooting a, a video till 3 a.m. like in Hawaii or something and them flying back. Like how far in advance do you schedule stuff and is time management something that you really focus on or does it just happen naturally for you? Similar to being good at performing because I don't like it, time management is everything because I'm a serious procrastinator. Okay. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Pisces. Language, I don't know how much people believe in signs, but I'm an extremist. I'm either doing something all the way or not at all. Right. Okay. And that not at all scares the shit out of me. <laughs> so I'm like seriously regimented because I know I'm capable of just eating chicken wings and playing Grand Theft Auto for two weeks straight. <laughs> like I know it. Like I know yeah. it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I think the, and, and it's that fear that, that drives me. It's not some, oh, I was born this way and I prefer it. I'm just scared. Yeah. I'm scared, oh. I'm scared of failure and I'm scared of, 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 of being a procrastinator because I know it's in me to be so, you know. Yeah, man. That's crazy. Did, um... When you guys did the Diamond District album, didn't you, the second one, didn't you guys record it and write it in like a pretty condensed amount of time? I think every EXO said I something like that. Like, is every record, record like that, really? Every record. The new record it comes out May 5th. I started November 27th and turned wow. it in January 13th. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. yeah. Wow. And I, I wonder, when you start working with other people, is it kind of a requirement that they're they can keep up with that? Like, oh, man, it's the reason why I don't so much. It's the reason why I'm not uh, a collaborative artist who sits in the studio until, you know, the wee hours of the morning vibing to make music. That don't work for me. Yeah, because you're like, yo, let's get it in. Yeah. You don't have your bars yet? Come on. Yeah. Like, me and Open Mike are doing a record. A, a full, full yeah, length? a whole record. Oh, shit. And, um, That's good news. I mean, <laughs> Steve making eye contact right and, here. Um, I called him. <laughs> I called him, uh, we called each other a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, yo, man, so um, I'm thinking as a timeline, I'd like to have this record turned in by the end of June. He said, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. I don't work like that. So I was like, hey, fair enough. I'm going to do all the beats, and I'm going to send it to him, and then he can take his time. Yeah. Are you going to rhyme on it, too, though? Because If he wants me to. Yeah. You did on the Mellow Music compilation that dropped in the last couple months, there's a joint that he raps on, right, that you produce, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I know, they, I think on that on Spotify at least they were trying to give love to all the producers so yeah. they're all listed so I was like oh shit it's Odyssey and gotcha. fucking Open Mike gotcha. Eagle going in Yeah, and then I noticed it was just him rhyming yeah that's why it's important for us to meet tonight this will be our first time actually meeting in person oh really trying to make that happen before he leaves tomorrow so huh yeah man well, let us know if you do need to wrap this up because I know nah, time is of the essence. But yeah, I, I'll sit it, here even and if bullshit his video's the whole done, time. I'll, I'm going I'm to hop in an Uber and jump over to wherever he's at. Okay. Just say what's all up. Right. So it's all good. So that's interesting. One of the things that, you know, we've talked about timeline wise is how, you know, the internet played such a critical role in people's development. Like you being able to contact promoters over in Europe, yeah. you know, through that. How did you first get in touch with the guy? Because you said the guy that, start, that uh, started Mellow Music or at least planted the seed. You said he lives in Arizona? Yeah. So have you interacted with him in person a lot, or is that mostly over? We have over never here? met in person. Wow. That's that's even crazy. to this day. How that's, crazy is that? That's we've crazy. I'm met. starting a record label right now. Yeah. <laughs> we've never met in person. And we've, we've been working 
we we talk more than any person I know. We talk more than you know what he looks like. We, yeah, yeah, How we know you? each other looks like. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you guys do like the yeah, FaceTime probably, thing no, like this or not even? We just call each other. We get we're on Facebook and you right. know, Instagram. You, you trying like, to start a record label? You know, like we talk every day. <laughs> wow. Like multiple times a day. Email, text, phone, every day. I talk to him more than my wife. I know it. Like, <laughs> like we talk every single day. We've never met. Does it ever divert? And like, yo, who do you think is going to win the Celtics game? Or is it it's like always strictly business? Uh, no, it's it's not always strictly business. It's um, mm. it's a lot of it, <laughs> never on sports though, because I don't watch sports too much. But okay, all kinds of other shit like books and women and uh, hey yo, what hey, yo. to do with money? Don't get yourself in trouble. Now. How much more you want? And what we would do with it if we had it, <laughs> and right. how we're gonna get it, and there's a lot of that, like outside of music, like yo, we want to do with this money. We're, we're very much on the same page of like we're trying to get as much as possible for our future <laughs> families, and we will stop at nothing to get it. So we talk. Well, speaking about that of which, do you have like what's the next big step for you guys? Um, he and I have been talking. We received a very healthy budget from our distributor. And we would like to see that double and triple within the next two to three years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much the, the most important thing. We would like to keep our output going and, um, and and work with a bigger budget each year. We don't ever want to stay with the same budget, you know. Right. You want to grow exponentially. It's a business. You know what I mean? So. And how, I guess a two-part question. You're constantly making your own music, focusing on your own music. Are you still a huge fan? Because I know from talking to you years ago, like you're still a bit, you were always like a huge hip hop cat. You know yeah, your shit, yeah. you, you know, up and down the line. Are you still really into that? And how much do you fancy yourself as like a curator for the label as it goes forward? Very much still a curator. Uh, okay. Very much a lot of uh, Mike and I's conversations are about what do you think of this guy? What do you think of this? How should we do this? What should the single be? What do you think of this artwork? How do you feel about that? Oh, you don't think we should release this on this day next week? Like, that's our conversation. Okay. You know, um, it's a lot of that involved. Uh, mm. I'm definitely still a, a, a hip hop head. Like, I love hip hop music so much. And I wish people loved it as much as I did. I wish it wasn't um, such a fad for so many people. Yeah. As far as the different styles of music, that are, are, of different subgenres of rap. Like, it's just so this i like this today and it, it drives me crazy especially going from dc to new york where yesterday you were a throwback in tim's and today you're a trill and you're dressed in all black and white like some zebra and what's it gonna be tomorrow <laughs> like what's it gonna be tomorrow like how do you do that how do you not how do you have no conviction to something that's so emotional as music cross colors you, <laughs> <laughs> right like, I don't know how that works. Like, you know, how people's entire identities change based on... Um, they're trying to get on, man. To. I guess they, they're trying to get on. They're, <laughs> they're trying, trying to get on. To get on. But I, that's, that's my one point I noticed is that when you... If you go around, like, we were in... Steve and I were actually in Austin for four days. And, like, you go to bars and they're playing, like, top 40 rap music that's, like, totally not meant for people that really, really like rap, right? Sure. It's kind of just meant to to be there but what i notice is that a year from now though you're not playing those songs even though like a pitbull song or something could get so incredibly big yeah. it's like the most disposable very disposable. piece of music where it's like i'm you know i'm still listening to like the shining yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and listening to like a j cole album or a kendrick Jackson bronson time. or something yeah right, right. But, like i'm still going way back through and then i love when i realize i didn't that I had slept on something like we were talking about the grave diggers recently. I'm like, Oh shit, I need to go back and like listen to a grave diggers record. Cause right, maybe it's right, been right, right, five to right, 10 years. Right. Do you, do you get some enjoyment of knowing that a lot of your music goes to people that are really, really the type of hip hop fans that you, that like you and I are? Um, yes and no. Okay. I, I'm enjoying this conversation. So I'm yeah. No, nah. honestly. Okay. Um, I probably listen to more mainstream rap now than I do underground. Really? Okay. Um, mainly because um, uh, musically, even though I might not want to go to the club or et cetera, they're doing things musically that interest me. Um, whether it's the adding of certain chord progressions or instruments that I wouldn't have thought of or um, someone like a Drake. I love Drake. Like subject matter wise, 
where I'm at in my life, I find myself being able to relate more to certain Drake lyrics than I do with most indie rappers. With most indie rappers, you guys know what I'm talking about, is in a lot of rapping about rapping. Yes. Where right. it's like, keep it real, and we need to take it back to how it used to be, and this is how it's supposed to sound, and I would rather you make that music than tell me about that music. Whereas um, a Drake will have a line where it's like, um, I got to get on the road get what I can from a city and then I just hop on a plane and go back to the cold. And I found myself in Austin not wanting to go until I was paid. I got paid gigs, jumped down there. And when I flew back, it was freezing and the Hudson River was frozen when I came back in. <laughs> and I was like, I just got what I can out of a city and hopped on a plane and went back to the cold. Like wow. <laughs> that actually just happened. So I find myself relating to that a lot more. Now, I appreciate that the heads absorb the music and really get and care and listen to my lyrics and understand the the blood, sweat, and tears that goes into the music. However, sometimes I'm held prisoner as a result of that, where I don't want you asking me about a snare that I used. I don't want you telling me <laughs> I should do a record with Elzai. <laughs> Yo, you should do a record with Elzai. <laughs> like, <laughs> but you really should though. But uh, like, go on, go like, on. Like, I'm an I fan, but yo, that's some usual suspect shit. Like, okay, you want me to do a record with Elzai and Sean Price and Guilty Simpson? Yes. Right. Like, <laughs> like, think outside of the box, but they don't think outside of the box a lot of times. And, and as an artist, it's very, very frustrating. But at the same time, they're able to absorb everything that's in that box and really appreciate it. But they want you to stay in that box. Shit, I mean, plus if everybody was as smart as you and had that figured out, everybody would be selling records to everybody else. <laughs> like you figured it out. You should do an uh, album with Pink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like I, I just... Um, Who are you? Yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's interesting. Like, I do experiments on my Instagram <laughs> where I'll post a photo of something that's very daring to me that displays a, a facet of my personality and that piece of my personality is what goes in to make my music. And that'll get X amount of likes. And as a social experiment, I do this. Then I'll post a record of me standing in front of some records. <laughs> Drives me crazy. Drives I me insane. I, I'm vaguely <laughs> having a memory when you made the Drake reference. Uh, it was like right around when started from the bottom dropped. Yeah. And you posted something. I, it might have been like maybe the album cover yeah. or something or it was a lyric. Yeah. And it was like vitriol back at you where people Cruise were like, people hate why, it. why are you why are you listening to this, dude? You're so much nicer. You know, like because I'm listening to him I, and I'm listening to Blue and I'm mm. listening to everything because, yo, you might not agree with his subject matter, but the man is a gifted lyricist. And that's something that a lot of heads don't understand is they think that their narrow idea of what real hip hop is, is hip hop. But there's so, many, there's so many facets of what real hip hop are. If we all know real hip hop started as party music and it morphed into being socially and politically conscious, then it went back to being party music and gangster rapping, et cetera. But they kind of always coexisted. Yeah. Spoonie G. <laughs> yeah. You know I mean, and, and I've never forgotten that. Like, there's some there's some music that needs to be for party and there's some music that needs to be for thinking. The problem is we don't have a balance in mainstream music. There's no balance anymore. It's not that one needs to exist and one needs to go away. It's that there needs to be a balance between the two. You know? So when you all right, so you've done albums with you rapping, you've also released several records that are almost entirely instrumental. For sure. Have you thought mentally and like dipped your toe in the water about producing for artists that don't rap? I had a phone call today about I'm trying to produce some singers. Okay. Um, there's two that I'm trying to work with right now. I would love to do that. Okay. Yeah, Who are so you? I, I would love to do that, man. And we would, uh, would that, would you like go dive right in, like you said, with the Pisces thing and be like, yeah, we're doing a, like an EP or we're doing a full length? We're, or would yeah. you just kind of be like, all right, let's do a song and see how this comes out? The the plan is, I don't want to, um, as I was telling them, I don't want anyone to know that I'm working with them because I've already been put in a box. I'm an indie underground rapper. Mm. I'm soulful. Um, I'm classic. Mm. And if I come out with something that's way more pop oriented and they find out that it's through me, they'll be overlooked. So it's better for them to come out and if it blows, let it blow and then let people find out that I'm involved with it afterwards. That's so smart, that, man. 
Yeah, like so seeing, then, seeing the field and seeing how all the pieces are moving. Yeah, so um, we're we're planning on doing thirty tracks each with each of them, and then uh, out of those thirty tracks, an EP will come out, a free release will come out, and an album. We'll shoot several videos, and before any of it comes out, we'll shop the entire thing to labels to get them picked up. And I'll take my finder's fee and my fifty percent from producing it, and I'll be their DJs when they go on tour, and we'll make money together. You know? I hope they blow, man. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I need this money. <laughs> hey, you, if you want to get them in front of a, a huge audience, we'll probably like three or four people. Have them on Chrome Bills, man. We'll interview them. <laughs> I hope it works out. I hope it works out. They're super talented, and uh, I think they could do some big things. How long will it take you to put all that together? One of them we've already we started like in November, and the other one I while you were doing your album. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's but crazy. This, this guy, I actually had a phone call with a guy today on the phone, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm on board. Let's do this." Mm. So, yeah. And let's let's plug the new record just a little bit. That is coming out May fifth. How 5th. many how many joints on that? Twelve. I think all my albums are twelve tracks. Yeah. Yeah. I always is there a reason for that? Albums. Rock Creek Park, uh, Diamond District Records. Like, it's Tangible Dream. Long Tangible Day? Dream was twelve. Was it really? Hear what they see was twelve. Odd Seasons. Um, maybe it was more than that because it was like several different ones. Is there a reason for? Is there anything specific to twelve? No, nah, I think twelve is just a good number of tracks. It's is like it? just enough, yeah. not too much. I feel like anything after that, you've already said it. It's somewhere within the first twelve, right? You know, I think anything under that is like, come on, man, that's not an album. Right. 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 Well, I think right. eleven. Does it, isn't it? A, you 11? owe me a dollar. I gave you ten. Like right, right, right. Tracks right. There. there is actually a standard for a long player, and that's it's, eleven tracks. Well, okay. long play is more than seven, isn't it? it? Nah. Is it extended, extended play. Eleven is what a long player is. Okay. okay. So okay. Anything above, I think that's how you get paid. Like if you're on a major. Okay. Anything okay. above eleven, that's just Got extra. You. you know. Right. Okay. Got you. Got you. Yeah, I just it's like all from spi- it's all from Spinal Tap. You ever seen Spinal Tap? Actually, yes, yeah, that's, that's, that's a hell of a movie. I got, I got crazy OCD too, so I like like even numbers. Like twelve just looks nice, right? Like so, yeah, I think that has a large portion to do with it. My OCD is like through the roof, man. So. Is it so, real? Well, so it's it's interesting. You mentioned earlier about how that affects the hypervigilance, how things lose their uniqueness very yeah. quickly for you because by the second or third time you've seen something and, and thought so thoroughly about it other people are like it's going to take me 15 times seeing that shit yeah what's what's exciting to you now that you're doing that's keeping your interest wow damn <laughs> got him cold digging deep mm-hmm. <laughs> stumpy d What's exciting to me now? Um, be, I, I honestly, soundscapes are like one of the most exciting things to me, straight up. Like when okay. I hear other artists' music and they introduce some sort of new dynamic or sound into their music, I'm like, what is that? I would have never thought to use that. How can I incorporate that into my own work? Like that's something that's really, really big to me. And um, Outside of the show aspect, traveling has always been a massive influence to me. Like existing in another place in time, and I do my best to exist in that place in time as if I'm from there, that always helps. It's always helped like throughout. Like I get, I start itching if I haven't traveled in a long time. I wanna piggyback on that thought and ask uh, about the New York move. Like how did the move to New York happen and sort of how how it settled in and was that entirely based on music or once you got here you were like because i know like i had lived in dc for a while as well and then when i left i was kind of like you know it was really good to live somewhere else yeah uh i think it's entirely based on music why i'm here um for reasons like this and of course i could have had this interview at home too but for all most times um open mic eagle doesn't just happen to be in dc for me to go pop past this video shoot yep um tons of interviews and uh the things that surround my industry the proximity to other industries that cross roads with mine the graphic designers and photographers the labels the journalists etc that's all here or la i i have to, i like walking so i couldn't live in la um but that's why i came here is the proximity to industry you know and then 
after meeting my wife, who is like a born and bred Parisian, I brought her to DC. She was like, yo, this place is mad boring. I can't live here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I can't really take her anywhere else but New York. Yeah, I, <laughs> not now. She got to get introduced to the States here. And then we've talked about it already, like getting out of here within the next couple of years. I'm mm. not I'm not like some like, oh my God, New York's the greatest city on earth. Like I would live in DC in a heartbeat. In fact, once they build, they finish the Northeastern Corridor rail that Amtrak's been speculating about building where you can get from DC to New York in an hour, I'm out. And you <laughs> go back to DC. Right back home, man. Okay, yeah. there you go. <laughs> I'm out. If they actually do build that for real, because the tracks, the trains can actually go that fast, but the tracks need to be retrofitted. I'm like reading about this shit constantly. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, you read about it? Yeah, I'm civil engineer by trade. Oh, okay. Me and Steve okay. are. So like, I've been keeping an eye on high speed rail, and like, it's it's been well done in other countries. Yeah, you know, yeah, like in France. Actually, you've probably even done it on some of your yeah, travels, ICE, like constantly. When yeah. I remember going from uh, Bologna to Florence in like 30 minutes, Dude. and you pop out, and like they have these vent things where you pop up and go back underground, and I was like, Yo, we're going that? like 500 miles per could hour. Could you imagine if you could get from DC to New York in an hour? Yeah, that's that's where I live at in Best Eye to one two fifth on the local train. Yeah, <laughs> like think <laughs> about that. I mean? Well, think about what it would open up as an option for even Philadelphia as being right. like a commute. Like, oh, I work in Midtown Manhattan, so I live in Philly. Yeah, you, we're in Philly in 30 minutes now. Philly yeah. is like a fraction of the cost of living. Yeah. You know, like... <laughs> it's it, crazy. It, it, I think it would be a mass exodus in New York if they built that. Probably. Know? Especially yeah. with how expensive everything is. Yeah. Getting... I know the accountants would be making a shit ton you of can, money. You can live in... Uh, <laughs> you can taxes live in... would be confusing as <laughs> shit. Oh, hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> I work oh, in yeah. California. Where do you live? Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> My you commute's move... 11 seconds. You can move back to Jessup. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh mm -hmm. man, I would totally be out though, man. I would go right back to DC. I love DC, yeah, for sure, man. I, well, so you are coming back because I one of the earlier stops on the tour is yeah. a show in DC, correct? Yeah, this, you ever heard of the joint? Yeah, TV? <laughs> we we I think it's gonna be um, Gibson Guitar Lounge. I think. Okay. The reason it's TBA is because I am going to be in D.C. that day, but it's to do Tiny Desk Concert at NPR and to do an in-office wow. performance at Sound Exchange. Wow. Okay. It's to do that. So I will be there that day, but we might, we, if we if I do a show, it's going to be a free show and that night. It'll be a free free performance for anybody who wow. wants to come. I'm there. I, if you, if you figure my. out where you're going to put it out, I don't want you to tell Mike. Just hit us up first yeah. and let us <laughs> post it. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> you need an opening act? He's got enough cars. We could take this show on the road, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We, we, it's going to be a free show for sure. And I think it's going to be dope, a Gibson. Man. I think so. I got to talk to Munch about that. Munch I'm surprised it's like that. Bohemian Caverns isn't just canceling whatever they have that night. <laughs> right. And putting it on. right. We we want to do something real small and intimate. I don't want it to be, I want to be like 80 people there. That's it. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. What did they put where Cap City used to be? <laughs> a yoga. Uh, yeah, that'd be like, illish shit. Yoga there, like if you rolled up with like four Beats pills. Common in just, this place. <laughs> bring back that real. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like shots of coconut water for everybody. Right. And like, Open Mike Eagle has here. the video I'm sure you've seen where they like roll up in the laundromat and do qualifiers. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, man. Well, he's speaking a, of an open Mike Eagle video, we don't want to hold you up if you got a roll. I did want to say one thing, and oh, I told you good, this man. when we were able to talk uh, to set this up. You know, I still am in touch with a lot of people that we came up with, and you were always the dude that I was like, that's, I mean, he's going to make it, so he doesn't need my hope. I was like, if I had to pick one dude, I hope it's him, you know? Oh, man. Like, I, seriously, like, I, I appreciate that. Like, it wasn't, and a lot of times at home didn't feel that way, so I appreciate it. Not from you, but from, like, the scenes. I appreciate that. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, man. That's the one thing I, I always, especially as I meet new people in New York, is that I, I'm so happy for what you guys are doing to draw attention to DC because I remember even coming up as a rapper and it was really fucking intimidating to go and freestyle because everyone was really, really nice at the open mic spots. Yeah. And then I just assumed that that's what it was like to get, you know, sort of as you uh, like advance into rap culture instead of yeah. realizing that we were just in an area where, you know, average was amazing. Yeah. Dope. Like, like, like Flex Matthews is like a type of guy that could just, if he's outside of DC and he's, you know, rolling on tour with somebody, he can kick a freestyle for 10 minutes and people would just be like, holy shit, who the fuck is this guy? Right, right, right. And right. he was like a guy in the cipher in DC that like belonged to be there, but might not even be 
the nicest guy that night or he yeah. might catch fire and be the dopest guy that night but it was yeah. like you'd you'd pop around and be people that could just fucking spit yeah. crazy yeah. you sees kosher like dave flex like they, yeah, it was just bars. Edan. Edan, like, yeah, it was just bars, man. Well, there was the people yeah. before us, too, like Kokai, right, Priest, right, Ghost. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, Priest it's, was, I think, the first Storm, local Storm, group. Storm, I, Storm, you know I mean? yep. Poem yeah. Cheese. Priest and Storm were, I think, the first local group that I saw play. They were like, they opened up for somebody that came in at, like, Capitol Ballroom or something. And I was like, oh, shit, these guys are local. That's amazing. Right. Team Demolition. Team Demolition. Yeah, 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 yeah man. Team Demo. The question mark asylum, I think, was <laughs> absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> I'm just fucking right. Yeah, well, speaking been, of curveballs with that, who, if you could pick one person that currently, right now, is not on the radar, but you'd like them to be, who would that person be? From 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 the area? Uh, no, just in general. One person not on the radar that I would like to be, Honestly, like Adele, it, it or is some from, shit like it that. Is from, it is from around the way, man. Um, I'm really rooting for uh, Twan from from DTMD. Okay. Like I, 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 I like where he's at with his music. I like where he's at with his head, and he's got a great aesthetic. Um, he's a gifted photographer. He shot the cover for Rock Creek Park. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. So he's got a great angle of. He's a st stupid hip hop head. Can't I think huh. he's like twenty three, twenty four? But his knowledge on hip hop is insane. So he's he's a he's gonna hold the torch for the culture, but he's gonna progress it at the same time, and he understands how to move with today. So I, I'm really rooting for Twan, man. Okay, nice. Did you um? Did you and Damu used to talk at all going like I? I've uh, open mics and stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We man, we all know each other. Exactly. That's. I was just thinking like <laughs> I, when I think of DC producers like that. Yeah. If like you said, everyone's gonna try and put you in a box. Yeah. If I start throwing people in the box, I'm like, yeah. all right, Kev Brown, you. Yeah, we all. You know, yeah. we all know each other. Damu. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All of us know each other, man. At one point in time, we've all done gigs together. Or yeah, doing something together. Yeah, you know I, mean? I remember when uh, it was Skrilla actually that was throwing like some of the, uh, was it Beat Society? When he was doing do Interloop. He was doing um, Beat Grind. Beat. That's what it was. Yeah. Beat Grind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are dope. Yeah. Those were, there yeah. were some of those that yeah. were just insane. That, yeah. Uh, was it was it Chief Ikes or Club Five? I, he I remember was doing them at a couple different places. Um, I think a couple were at Chief Ikes. There was some right on uh, 18, like down towards. Florida, but I can't remember exactly where he was doing them. But yeah. Oh yeah, yep, I remember was that. Was it Ben and Moe's? Uh, was he doing? I think B Society was at Ben and Moe's. Okay, yeah. B, B Grind is where a couple different places. Did they? Well, they had stuff at Cap City too, right? Yeah, yeah. I yeah, want to yeah, say yeah, I saw yeah. like beat. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, all right, so let me ask you this because I keep coming back to the whole time management thing. Well, what do you do while you're on the road? <laughs> He's asking for advice. Like, if he can't talk. Yo, see, <laughs> see, like, <laughs> He's you really what do I do when I'm on the road? <laughs> like, it's obvious you read quite a bit, like what you just broke down about the fast train between D.C. Like, I hadn't heard that at all. Yeah. How, what are you staying into, like, the local newspapers, books? What do you... Um, A lot of online reading, just kind of touching on, on a post in the Times and um, Al Jazeera and BBC to figure out, like, my family's, half my family's from Sudan, so I'm, I'm reading about what's going on in the Middle East and North Africa a lot. But... Like a normal day for me on tour, um, I wake up, I make coffee, I eat breakfast, I check emails, I go for a walk, I come back, I do sound check, I eat dinner, I do a show, I go back to the hotel, I shower, I sleep, and I do that over. I just over and over and over. That's it. <laughs> wow. That's it. <laughs> so no matter Maybe where I'm at, I feel like I'm at home. You know, Maybe right. DC wasn't too boring for your girl, man. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't DC. It was me. <laughs> I'm no bad shot. boring. I'm fucking, I'm fucking up. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much it, man. And I, I I have a coffee kit, Cole. Like yeah, I have my own hand grinder, beans, hey yo, cup, filter, <laughs> and I I grind I hand grind my coffee every single morning. I put the filter on. I make coffee. I have the same cup of coffee every single day, no matter. You where take I'm at that with you on tour, is what you're saying? On tour. Yeah. yeah, you have a you have a different kind of grinder. I, I have a curious. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. 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 Kind of and yeah. still, no booze, right? No booze. Nah. No smoking pot. Nah, nah. You smoke the hookah though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. mean, I'm I'm half Arab. Like that just kind of <laughs> came with it with the territory. I just was raised around that. Um, but on tour, I don't smoke too much. Like, um, I did a show at Trinity College on the April 11th, and I was winded. And I at that time I was smoking like every day 
at, at night I would have like a hookah. So I haven't had any since then, and I won't until this tour is done. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I won't. I won't. I won't have any. So, so I, like last hookah I smoked was April tenth. Yeah. That's okay. discipline. And you haven't even thought. I mean, do you still think? Do you ever have moments where you're like, yeah, you know what? That would hit right now. Oh hell or you yeah! You don't even think twice. Okay. Hell yeah! <laughs> or, hell yeah! But I just like, eh, I don't have that whole addiction thing. I, don't, I think it's a hereditary thing. My dad quit smoking for seven years, just cold turkey. Moved yeah. back to Sudan and all of his homies he grew up with smoked chain smoke out front of the house. He started smoking again, but yeah. it wasn't because he needed it. He's quit for seven years straight. You know what I mean? And I right. very much have that. There's no addiction for me. Like I can stop smoking shisha for like months and then come back to it. Now I hit that shit like every day. I saw right. it earlier all today. All or nothing type thing. You know I, mean? I saw earlier today like an electronic hookah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Have you yeah, ever yeah. stepped to that? It's just vape pens. It's trying to call them shits yeah. something else. But, you know, it's a vape <laughs> pen, man. Yeah. That's some funny shit. Yeah. All right, we should let this man get up and out of here. He has all right. provided us all with good. some really good shit right it was, here. It was Thank you very Thank much for coming This through. is actually a, a fun and dope interview. Like, not once did you ask me, where'd you get your start? What's your inspiration? <laughs> what do you like better, producing or rapping? <laughs> right. Like my fucking routine questions that make me want to shoot myself. Like, y'all didn't ask me any of those. You know what I, mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> I think I might have been guilty of asking Did whether you? you produced or rapped first. Like, I was just curious which one. That was like, that was like, it was a part of it though. I was already talking about it. It was about a part rap. of something, yeah. yeah, yeah like it was gonna, That was totally cool. You know what I mean? It was a part of it all, if you will. <laughs> it was a part of it all. You don't have a button on that NPC for that one right there? We might have to, we need, we need some, uh, we need some drops though. Okay. How, how you feel about a drop, Odyssey? That's fine. That's fine. All right, tight. Well, let's, let's, you want to go out with a song? Can we play a track off the new album or a track off an old album or what? Whatever you want to do. Let's play I, the I new play, singles available on Spotify, right? Or play "Word to the Wise" is also new. Uh, but is it uh, is uh, "That's Love" is out too right now? "That's Love," "Counterclockwise," and "Belong to the World" are three singles off the album that are out right Yo, now. Oh, really? Okay. Was, I can't blend "Counterclockwise" with anything, man. I mean, oh yeah, play <laughs> "Belong to like, the World." I think that's ninety four. <laughs> <laughs> that's like "Counterclockwise" like five four. That's what. No, no, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Hey, thank you very much for your time, and just to be honest. I'm so glad to to be able to just catch up, but I just like hearing you talk shop, man. You're very hey, man. impressive. Thank you, man. For yeah, it was really gonna, it was really good meeting you, man. I'm, I'm a huge fan. Likewise, I'm, I'm, man. Hopefully, definitely. when I when I come back home, let's just like you know grab something to eat or something when I get back. Absolutely, I'll that'll work. You know. Cool. Cool. This has been Chrome Bills episode 81. Definitely Odyssey. This is, this is me blending in. What's the track? That was good. <laughs> Until you started to vomit I don't go that route 
I don't hang with them. I just go around the globe and I deter from the stuntin' and keep it all in house. The world's my backyard, I'm tryna break my fence. Nah, I'm just tryna break out the mold, tryna do the opposite of everything that I'm sold. Try to put me in a box already in the globe. So I don't get offended by the thinking of the old. Where I'm at is where I go, in a circle ain't my thing. And so it seems there were two gangs, not enough for too much change. Two with strings, and we accord in the middle. Forever lost in the process, the truth between. Somebody asked, what do you claim? I belong to the world. What's a click? What's a crew? What's a gang to a brother who been doing this thing? All along, I belong to my name. That's the only set of claim. I ain't bothered by the politics of fame. I perform, they put on. That's the norm. Try to get me on a song like, ballin' it, shoot it at. Then they got the wrong mic. This the wrong platform. They get about the wrong light. This is for the people I'm just trying to cut a path for. Try and make some music for the future that'll last long. Though they never ask for it, I'ma get to him. I'ma get to him. Pie in the tunes and forever I'ma live through him. Word to Bob Molly, he put memories and melodies. It's relevant and present, though he made it in the 70s. That right there was telling me the classic with it better be. And if it ain't, it don't deserve to represent the pedigree. Part of the solution, a part of the problem. All the moving parts in the process revolving. What are you involved in? Answer my calling. I belong to the world. I got some here. We go. I didn't want to get I didn't want to get too Stanish over the. Uh. Put it in the pocket. Oh. You got smoke, smoke. Oh, you found it. Trust you me. You found it. Trust me. I, I found it. How did you I, find it? Yo, I we I sent this to you. I, either me or Chuck sent this to you over Twitter like three years ago, but you never responded. I never saw it because Mike runs my Twitter. By the way, I not me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm coming at Mike's neck next time I see him. Stop, stop, everybody stop. Everybody. Oh, this is the... thought I was an asshole on the radio Thursday. They thought I was an asshole on the radio Thursday. Now, I'm going to show y'all what I was talking about. Can't no nigga make Stomp Dog and Smoke do what I make them do. Because that's my family. And that's how I'm going. You can take it how you take it. See me when you see me. See me in the streets, nigga. And saddle up, smoke. When I saddle one up, smoke. Here it wow. comes. It's coming. That's why he found it. This is what the streets won't let me chill. Let me chill. Yep, there it is. Wow. <laughs> I do remember when Steve found that. I was like, yo. How did you find that? How did you find that? I, uh, so I got a guy I work with. Um, he's an old go-go head. And uh, he had a whole bunch of tapes, so I was digitizing tapes, right? So then we would just talk go go all the time, and then he sent me a uh, it was a it was a not a battle, but it was Bugs and Smoke going back and forth on the drums, and that was part of.